Have you ever stopped to reflect on the difference between the soul and the spirit? You might have come across these terms in church, read about them in the Bible, or even discussed them with friends. But have you truly considered what the Bible says about the difference between the two? If you've ever been curious or perhaps a bit confused, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll explore scripture to uncover deep truths that can help you better understand these two fundamental aspects of who you are, your soul and your spirit. Stick around because by the end, you'll have a clearer grasp of what sets them apart, how they work together, and how this knowledge can transform your spiritual journey. Before we dive in, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future explorations of God's Word. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and share it with others who might need this message today. Now let's jump in. The Bible frequently mentions both the soul and spirit, but like many believers, you might have assumed they were the same thing. After all, both seem to relate to our inner life, right? Well, they are connected, but they aren't identical. The Bible provides valuable insights into how the soul and spirit function separately, and understanding this can lead to a richer spiritual life. Let's start by looking at some of the original languages used in the Bible. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for soul is nephesh, which refers to a living being, breath, or the inner self. It's often used to describe the emotional, intellectual, and volitional aspects of a person, what makes you unique, your individuality and personality. Think of your soul as the seat of your mind, emotions, and will. On the other hand, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, meaning wind or breath. It's associated with the life force given by God. In Genesis 2, 7, we read that after God formed Adam from the dust, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Here we see that the soul comes to life when God breathes his spirit into us. While the soul represents your life, the spirit is the divine spark that connects you directly to God. Let's begin by focusing more on the soul. As mentioned earlier, your soul is the core of your mind, emotions, and will. It's what makes you uniquely you. It's the part of you that experiences joy, sadness, frustration, or peace. It also drives the decisions you make based on your thoughts and feelings. Think about it. Have you ever been deeply moved by a song or a piece of art? That's your soul at work. The soul can feel a vast array of emotions and is often where the struggle to make decisions takes place. In Psalm 42, 11, the psalmist asks, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Here, the psalmist speaks directly to his soul, encouraging it to focus on God, despite the emotional turmoil he's experiencing. Your soul doesn't just feel, it thinks, reasons and wrestles with complex choices. It's where the actions of your will are carried out. In Matthew 22:37. Jesus instructs us to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, highlighting the essential role the soul plays in how we live out our faith. But here's something interesting. The soul is not the highest part of you. While it deals with the emotional and earthly aspects of life, it needs something greater to guide it. That's where the spirit comes in. If the soul is the center of your emotions and intellect, the spirit is your connection to God. In the Bible, the Spirit is often described as the part of us that communes with God and receives His guidance. When you become a believer, your spirit is made alive by the Holy Spirit, and that's where true transformation begins. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 explains this distinction. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. Unlike the soul, the Spirit is eternal. It's what links us to the divine. Your spirit is what connects with God when you pray, worship, or seek His guidance. As John 4.24 says, God is spirit, and His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. It's through your spirit that you communicate with God, enabling you to live out your faith in a way that goes beyond just intellect or emotion. 
The Spirit also plays a key role in your spiritual growth. In Romans 8.16, Paul writes, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. This refers to the deep inner confirmation from the Holy Spirit to your spirit, assuring you of your relationship with God. It is your spirit that affirms that you belong to Him, providing you with the certainty that you are His. One of the clearest distinctions between the soul and spirit is found in Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. This verse shows us that God's Word can differentiate between the soul and spirit, meaning that while they are closely connected, they are distinct enough to be separated by divine truth. Think of the soul as your operating system, governing your daily life, how you think, feel, and make choices. The spirit, however, is your connection to the Creator, the source of life, and the place where divine wisdom and guidance are received. Many Christians tend to operate mainly on the level of the soul, relying on their emotions and intellect to make decisions, but in doing so, they often miss out on the deeper spiritual life. While the soul can be swayed by emotions or external circumstances, the spirit leads to true life. The Apostle Paul touches on this in 1 Corinthians 2.14, 15, explaining that those without the Spirit cannot accept the things from the Spirit of God and see them as foolishness. This highlights that without a Spirit made alive through faith in Christ, our understanding of spiritual matters will be limited. The soul, influenced by worldly concerns, may struggle with doubts, fears, or temptations, but the Spirit, connected to God, receives wisdom, peace, and assurance. Although the soul and spirit are distinct, they are meant to work together in harmony. The soul may feel fear, but the spirit brings peace. The soul might react impulsively, driven by emotions, but the spirit offers God's wisdom and direction. The more we allow our spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit, to lead us, the more our soul will align with God's will. Consider this. In times of trouble, your soul may experience anxiety or fear. But your spirit, if attuned to God, can provide peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. By staying in tune with God's spirit, your spirit can remind your soul to trust in his promises. This dynamic interplay is crucial for living a victorious Christian life. So what does this mean for your spiritual journey? Understanding the difference between your soul and spirit can profoundly impact how you approach your faith, prayer life, and everyday decisions. The first key area to consider is prayer. Take note of whether you're praying from your soul, focusing on your emotions or desires, or from your spirit, where you're seeking God's will. By being aware of this difference, your prayers can become more in tune with what God truly wants for your life. The second area is decision-making. When you face a choice, ask yourself, am I being led by my soul? my emotions, thoughts, or desires, or is my spirit connected to God guiding me? Learning to discern the difference can help you make decisions that align with God's plan for your life. The third area is worship. Remember, true worship is a matter of the spirit. When you worship, engage your spirit, not just your emotions. Worshiping God in spirit and truth allows you to go beyond the surface and connect with Him in a deeper, transformative way. Now that we've explored the difference between the soul and the spirit, let's take a moment to reflect. Understanding these two aspects of who we are can deepen our relationship with God and bring clarity to our spiritual journey. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of both our soul and spirit. Help us grow in wisdom as we learn to discern the difference between the two. May your spirit guide us, lead us into truth, and strengthen our soul to walk in your ways. Awaken our spirit to hear your voice clearly and guide us in everything we do. Thank you for your love and for drawing us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If this video has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more deep biblical insights. Let's continue growing together in Christ.